Like, so how do you think they would have made all these? This is when I couldn't watch it. I couldn't handle it. This shot's actually done backwards to get her hair to flow the right way. Oh! oh! I forgot how brutal this was. Just wait, dude. Hey! Happy Halloween! Welcome back to another episode of Visual Effects Artists React. Today we're gonna be looking at some spooky movies, kind of like him. Whoa. So real quick, we will be showing some things with gore, but we're doing it from a making of cinema perspective. So this isn't blood you're seeing, this is a bunch of food coloring and corn syrup. Any guesses as to who I, as to who I am? Give me a hand. A hand? Okay, I got you. <gasps> I know Cinema 4D. Oh, you're Morpheus. Yeah, uh, close, very close. I'm the Matrix. You are the Matrix. I'm the Matrix. I'm Storm Toad. I'm like a stormtrooper toad. Like a Technically, master. Technically, I'm, I'm Captain Phasma, Phasma Toad. Nico, what are, uh, what are, yeah, what are you? Yeah, what are you, Nico? Um. All right, enough of the code breaking, enough of the peasant killing, let's get into these movies. I think it was a good night. Nope. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite horror films is a movie called The Cabin in the Woods. This is a movie that pays homage to pretty much every single horror film to have ever been made. It incorporates all the same like cliches and ideas. It's very obvious that the filmmakers behind this movie, everyone involved, loves horror movies. Every monster from every horror movie to have ever been made is in this warehouse of little prison cells holding each monster and they're slowly seeing all of the other monsters that are around them. So this girl, <laughs> she's just kind of like a fantastical representation of Guillermo del Toro's sort of imagery, right? Yeah. Okay, got you. This guy, this uh, is Michael Myers. Oh, uh, Hellraiser. We'll tear your soul apart. Hellraiser, exactly. It's not the same. It's it's actually very different. He's right. got like these saw blades in his face. Dude, this is so dark with these shades. Like it's already a dark scene, but with these shades, <laughs> it's just so freaking dark. The dog Cujo, Pennywise, Anaconda. Is that Left for Dead? Is that yes! a boomer? Is that yes! a boomer? Look at that belly button, it's huge. So like, how do you think they would have made all these? 3D modeling, I would guess. They did that for some of the things. They did most of it for real. They actually built out several different versions of those cube prisons at hmm. different scales. Oh, interesting. So you have like the full size one that people can stand inside, but then they had smaller ones that they put regular people in to make them look huge. And then they had really tiny ones that they actually put real bugs. Oh, that's so cool. Creepy. Yeah, that thing right there. Look at how gross that is. That's awesome. But because, and it's like not that big, yeah. but when it's set at the same size as the same prison that holds people, it looks like this eight foot wide monster. Dude, all this work for just one banging shot. Well, Seriously. technically most of these monsters get utilized at some point earlier in the movie. Earlier on in this movie, there's even a scene from the video game Fear. I think the girl's name is Alma. It's an actual movie version of the video game, just That's for a rad. moment. I That's love cool. Fear. Yeah, Fear that, is such a good game. That was like the first game that like scared the crap out of me. I couldn't, Same, dude. I could not play that game, dude. I want to talk to you guys about one of the scary movies that scared me the most as a kid, and that was The Ring. Oh, that's cool how her hair like goes over the lip first of the well. Rather than that in reverse and then played it backwards. Oh, cool. Okay, okay. See, I'm trying to think about this movie in the context of when it came out. Oh, in this part right here specifically. Yeah, people lost it. Do that rotoscoping behind his hair? I know, I know. Wait, was that actually rotoscoping or is she there? <laughs> Let's break this down real quick. This is actually a pretty simple effect. Basically, you have your clean plate here where they're shooting in this apartment and they're backing the camera up and they're gonna redo the take with the girl on a green screen 
crawling through a square hole that are the exact dimensions of the television. This shot's actually done backwards to get her hair to flow the right way. So they probably started with her leaning out and then she leans back and pulls her arm back to get her hair to oh, flow. Oh yeah, yeah, correctly. of course. Because the sure. hair like droops over the TV in a really interesting way. Yeah, which they also did on the well. It's a really nice subtle touch that throws you off and makes you think that things are being otherworldly. Yeah. There's a couple things that I want to point out. It's one thing to take a TV, cut out the glass, put a hole in the back, and have your actress actually like crawl through the hole of the TV, and then you just replace the background. But notice there's two different versions of her here. I think there's an actual version where she's in front of a camera, and that's comped into the actual shot of the TV. And then it's a different version of her that's crawling out of the TV. And they, they matched it pretty well. So when a 3D object phases through like a wall, for instance, it's not just a simple matter of like fading that person out. So what they're doing here is they're actually manually being like, okay, so the front bit of the hair is coming through first. So that gets revealed first and slowly wipes outwards as the rest of her hair comes through. And then some glass type distortion effects at those edges. And then they're rotoing her. Even when she comes out of the TV, she's being rotoed and affected slightly, you know, to give her that TV flickery light look. There's something that we haven't pointed out at all yet. Look at that TV screen. It looks very good. They got the reflections mm -hmm. of the background very nicely reflecting off the glass of the TV. I feel like that's easy know. enough to comp a reflection over top of it. It's in the frame for just a little bit up in the top left corner, and you just reference what that actually looks like at your TV at home, and you comp it in. Well, I mean, that reflection- Looks really good. It's very good. That looks like glass. If we were to do this now, the TV would just be an empty box, and you'd film your actor doing this all in one shot, and you just rotoscope your actor, make them, you know, black and white, and up the contrast so they kind of stand out, and then you just CG back in some glass on the TV. But it's also very possible that it's just a motion control rig, and they just did it once at the actual TV there to get the clean shot of the screen. That's a good point though, because then you can preserve all of those real reflections. Paranormal activity. It has kind of like a vlog type feel to it. This movie deals with tension brilliantly, but also they have some very simple visual effects in this movie that really just pound home the point. The little shadow on the uh -huh. door. This is the moment. This is when I couldn't watch it. I couldn't handle it. Oh my God. Was that it? Yeah, that was it. I didn't get scared at all. This was my hand watching that scene with no sound, because I remember how scary it was. How would you have approached this shot, Nico? I would tie a rope around her ankle, dragged her out of bed, and then just erased me and the rope. That sounds like the most low budget solution, because that's probably exactly what they did. <laughs> <laughs> there are two ropes, one from a person off to the side pulling her out of bed, and then a second rope that is also still there pulling her down the hallway. It's a pretty simple paint out, it looks like. Just some, you know, to take some time. But like, this is the shot of the movie. You can spend a little bit of time. It's just rotoscoping. Is basically all it is. It's a simple effect. They're doing themselves a favor by shooting at night like this yeah. because the ground is basically like a couple solid colors like gradient, you know? Eric Beck from Indie Mogul did this exact shot. There are no behind the scenes of the movie. He's actually just guessing how they did it. What? It's so well done. <laughs> Almost better than the movie. <laughs> they had to make these special ropes just to like grip her leg without cutting off circulation. Yeah, so it's pulling on a wider surface area. Than... Exactly, exactly. So they're hiding most of it with the sweatpants. Yeah, exactly, and that was the thing, is that like, I thought I remember her wearing shorts in that scene, but upon watching it again, she's totally wearing pants, which would cover all of the stuff around the rope. Okay, I mean, I guess if we're looking at this movie, we might as well look at the one actual digital VFX shot in the movie, it's the final shot. Yeah, this is, this is more just time-lapse footage. Just record for a long time, have oh, your actors stay very still. That's so creepy. Just standing over him, watching him sleep. Ah! <laughs> is that when she... Ah! I think this was the moment I couldn't handle. Yeah, I remember being super scared about this moment too. Because she starts coming towards the camera, you're just like, Oh yeah, I, I could coming for me. I couldn't handle this. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! 
But then they do the Andrew Kramer. Hey, what's up? Andrew Kramer here. <laughs> demon, demon face. Demon face, the demon demon face effect, yeah. It looks like they almost had him just jump numerous times and then stitch all the frames together. Hey, that's a fake shadow on the door. So I think you might be right. I think that actually is how they did that. Just like him kind of jumping up and just kind of keeping that shape as similar as possible. Yeah, so he jumped there and then he jumped again there. Yeah. So Oren Pelly, the director of the movie, made the movie for $15,000. And then when it got picked up, other people put more money into it to make it a theatrical release. And it went on to make $890 million. Wow. That is a blockbuster hit. This just goes to show, it's like you can make an excellent movie for almost no money. You don't need to have the best gear in the world to make a great film. Blair Witch was the same deal. Yeah, no, Blair Witch was actually made for cheaper. Ah! I'm gonna die out of here. Would you like to learn how to dodge bullets? Would you like to learn how to jack into the Matrix? What is the Matrix? Maybe you want to learn Cinema 40. Maybe you want to learn how to do VFX. How would you know the difference between the dream world and the real world? Well, subscribe to this channel because we do a lot of that stuff. Are you saying I can render that shot in 10 minutes? I'm saying that when you're ready, Nico, you won't have to render anything. Definitely subscribe to the channel and you won't be missing out on anything VFX related, I promise. We'd be wasting our time if we didn't talk about practical effects in horror movies. And I know this is VFX Artists React, but I gotta talk about one of my favorite scary movies of all time, and that's John Carpenter's The Thing. This is before computer-generated effects. Yeah. Everything oh. they see. So good. All practical. Oh! oh. I forgot how brutal this was. Just wait, dude. Oh man, it looks so good. Oh my oh, god. Look at that, dude. Uh, look at that. Like, I still can't believe this, dude. It looks so good. Disgusting. Oh my god. Oh yeah. It's so good. Dude, look at that. Such genius uses of fake floors. And it's like such perfect little tricks. Like that's just a dude with a rod behind like the desk moving the head around. It's super basic. Super basic. I mean the models aren't basic. Oh, that shot! <laughs> I gonna... forgot that shot! Just a little spider head crawling away in the background. And then dude, this when they turn around, they're like, what the heck? I'm kidding. Dude, that's real fire. They were actually burning that prop. Yeah. Everything in this movie is legit. This movie was filmed in 81. I think it came out in 82. And it looks so good because it's real. Rob Bottin, he was 19 years old, I believe, when he did this whole movie. All this stuff had to be lit in a very specific way for it to look real. It was very dark, edge lit, and they had like a greasy gel layer that they threw over top of everything to give it that nice sheen. Everything looks wet and gross. Yeah. And every mm. single shot is like masterfully composed in order to hide all the things behind the scenes. So this shot right here, right? You have the two effects artists underneath the table. They're puppeting the whole thing. You have a guy at the dummy's feet and he's you know pulling some strings too. And they're pulling this head back and inside of the head it's full of a bunch of different melted plastic and bubble gum and whatnot the little pus balloons that fill up here yeah, yeah. with like egg yolk it looks like yeah. what makes that shot powerful for me is that it comes out of nowhere yeah you're not expecting a chest to just mm. open up and then bite you it's a replica of this dude's body even the head even the head yeah because it tears off later oh that's right and it took yeah, about yeah. a month and a half to build out this perfect sculpture of this guy this replica so this guy goes down boom they tear his stomach open, perfectly timed. And if you mess that up, you've just torn the stomach open of your prop. Yeah, they only have one take of this. They only do this once. So his hands get bit off, and this is actually an amputee. They gave him fake arms, bit his fake arms off, and he pulled back to reveal just like his nubs and tear the arms off. Oh man, do they get the tearing of that fake skin? Yeah. And it's all these little like masterful tricks going into making this look real and keeping it real. It's just incredible. This is just a taste. If you hadn't seen the thing, please go watch it because this is just a taste of all the scenes in this movie. They're they're all this good. They're incredible. So we'd be remiss if we didn't pull up the 2011 thing. I really wanted to compare this. Not all of us are human. Let's put him over there on the couch. Oh, they got Tormund? Dude, Tormund! Is that a Game of Thrones reference? <laughs> oh. 
That's pretty cool. So I'm looking at this and I'm just like, that little monster does look pretty good for a CGI monster. It's nice CGI. Like it's a great looking CGI. Yeah. No, don't get me wrong. There's some pretty sweet moments in this. It's just a lot of it you can tell is CG, which takes you out of the movie. And for me, if you were to compare the two, of course I got to choose John Carpenter's version, you know? But that's because John Carpenter was like a master filmmaker too. 100%. This leads to a very common misconception in the world, and that is practical is better than CGI. A lot of people believe this and they swear by it. They're like, oh, it's always better when you can do it practically than using CGI or effects. And it's like, that's not how it works. At least from what I've always kind of figured that like a mixture of some practical stuff augmented with effects is always better than just effects or just practical. And that's what they were originally gonna do with this remake remake. It was mostly practical with some visual effects like adjustments after the fact. Oh man, that practical effect looks so good. Look how gross this is. Look how much of an effect this has on us right now just watching this like reality documented moment. Yeah, so this I think Studio ADI. Yeah, they did. It looks so good. All this practical work. That's insane. I think it was the studio and the producers who did this. They they said it looks too much like an 80s movie. So they went back and they redid everything in CG. I mean, it, that does look really good. Yeah, no, 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 it, it certainly does. Well, they have the best reference. They hired a whole special effects team and then just covered up all the work. <laughs> that is <Yeah>. true. <laughs> so they are keeping parts of the original footage. Now that I'm seeing this breakdown, they show like the CG head, the CG face, but then they cover it up with the real footage of the face. My take on CGI is this. At the end of the day, CGI is a fancy cartoon. You know, it can look really nice. You can hit strong emotions, but it's still a quote unquote cartoon. That's the effect that it has. Versus a practical effect is more theatrical. It's more, and I mean that in like the literal sense of being on a stage. And it's a thing that's real, that you can hold in your hands and act with. There's a certain level of coordination and authenticity that you definitely don't get with CG. Authenticity, that's the key there, I think. And that's what a lot of horror movies are, is that visceral reaction that you want to get out of people. At the end of the day, we know movies are fake. There's a certain amount of appreciating the art. And you, I can appreciate good CG, like I know what goes into mm -hmm. it. Like there's a lot of great artistry there. Most people, when they see something that's real, like a prosthetic, they can think of, oh, painting something that, like that would be hard. Yeah. Mo sculpting that would be hard. You get how hard it would be, and there's just the matter of appreciating it. Go watch John Carpenter's The Thing, and then watch this one, and le let us know what you guys think down below in the comments which film you preferred which film you were more in on you may have seen when we reacted to birdemic and how awful those effects were look at this dude it's like clip art i was reading through the comments on that video and there were a lot of them that were saying that we should fix the effects of that movie well guess what we are doing it we're gonna make birdemic kind of good <laughs> so subscribe so that you will be notified first thing when that video drops in about a week <laughs> So this Halloween this year is a little bit different in that, you know, the whole trick-or-treating thing probably isn't gonna happen quite the same way. So if you guys are staying home and watching a spooky movie, I hope you have fun. If you're having a couple friends over and playing some spooky board games or looking at each other's costumes, I hope it's cool. And all I gotta say is it's been an absolute pleasure making these videos for you guys. I really do enjoy sitting on the couch with you guys doing these videos. It's come to this. We're dressed up. We're doing a Halloween episode. We started this, what? A year and a half now, man. Wow. Good times, everybody. It's been fun. No, it still is fun. That sounds like really morbid. <laughs> well, it's okay it's a little morbid. It's Halloween. It is Halloween. Oh yeah, good point. Yeah. Hey, if you don't subscribe, I'll rip your arms off. <laughs> All right, that's a good time for us to end the video. Bye everybody. See you, happy Halloween. <laughs>